He is known for being an American novelist who revolutionized literary forms with his semi-autobiographical novels. He developed a unique style that combined character study, social criticism, explicit language, and mysticism. Recognized for works like Tropic of Cancer and the Rosie Crucifixion Trilogy, he is Henry Valentine Miller. In the realm of literature, one name stands out as a trailblazer, Henry Valentine Miller, an American novelist who revolutionized the literary landscape. Miller was not content with existing literary forms, instead, he dared to push boundaries and create a new genre of semi-autobiographical novels. These works were a unique blend of character study, social criticism, philosophical reflection, stream of consciousness, explicit language, sex, surrealist free association, and mysticism. Miller's most notable works, such as Tropic of Cancer, Black Spring, Tropic of Capricorn, and the trilogy The Rosy Crucifixion, were inspired by his experiences in vibrant cities like New York and Paris. Through these novels, Miller painted vivid pictures of the human condition, delving deep into the complexities of life, love, and society. His writing style was raw, unfiltered, and deeply personal, offering readers a glimpse into the depths of his own soul. But Miller's talents extended beyond the realm of writing. He also ventured into the world of travel memoirs and literary criticism, showcasing his versatility and passion for the written word. In addition, Miller explored his artistic side through watercolor paintings, further demonstrating his creative prowess. Henry Valentine Miller's contribution to literature cannot be overstated. His innovative approach to storytelling and his willingness to tackle taboo subjects opened doors for future generations of writers. Miller's works continue to captivate readers with their honesty, depth, and unapologetic exploration of the human experience. In the bustling streets of Brooklyn, in the years between 1917 and 1930, a writer by the name of Henry Miller embarked on a journey that would shape his literary career. At the time, Miller was married to his first wife, Beatrice Silva's Wickens, and together they resided in a modest apartment on 6th Avenue in Park Slope. During this period, Miller found employment at Western Union, working as a personnel manager in the messenger department. It was a job that provided stability but left him yearning for something more. In the midst of his daily routine, he began to cultivate his passion for writing, seizing every spare moment to pen his thoughts and ideas. In 1922, during a three-week vacation, Miller dedicated himself to crafting his first novel, Clipped Wings. Although this work remains unpublished and only fragments remain, it served as a catalyst for his future literary endeavors. Miller himself admitted that it was a flawed piece, but it laid the foundation for his exploration of themes that would resurface in later works, such as, Tropic of Capricorn. As fate would have it, Miller's life took an unexpected turn in 1923 when he met June Mansfield, a captivating dance hall performer. Despite still being married to Beatrice, Miller found himself captivated by June's allure and they embarked on an affair. In 1924, they tied the knot, and Miller made the bold decision to leave his job at Western Union behind, fully committing himself to the pursuit of writing. During this period, Miller delved into the creation of his second novel, Moloch, or, This Gentile World. Initially penned under the guise of being written by his wife Juliet, the book drew inspiration from his tumultuous first marriage and his experiences at the Western Union office. However, it would take 65 years for this novel to see the light of day, long after Miller's passing. Amidst his literary endeavors, Miller also grappled with personal challenges. His relationship with June was complex, and her close friendship with the artist Marion, whom she renamed Jean Kronsky, caused strain within their marriage. June and Kronsky eventually left for Paris, leaving Miller behind and causing him great distress. Tragically, Kronsky took her own life around 1930. Do you want to explore more novelists? Who do you want to see featured next? Subscribe and leave a comment below to let me know. I'll see you in the next video.